he went back to Moscow. Um, he started giving interviews um, on, on MSNBC and CNN. He called the war a war, which is supposedly illegal in Russia. He called Putin a murderer. And shortly thereafter, um, a bunch of dark black uh, 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 uniformed police officers um, uh, came to him as he was getting out of his car and grabbed him, put him in a minibus and put him in detention. Can you just explain to us how your friend Vladimir has found himself in this position? What was it that he said that got him into the trial in the first place? Well, let me just give you a bit of background on Vladimir. So Vladimir, uh, as you mentioned, is a journalist. Um, he's also a member of the opposition in Russia, the opposition to Vladimir Putin. And Vladimir, for, for many years, um, has been uh, attending demonstrations, organizing demonstrations, exposing corruption. And most importantly, Vladimir worked with me on a piece of legislation called the Magnitsky Act, which is a sanctions legislation which freezes the assets and bans the visas of human rights violators in Russia and kleptocrats. Vladimir has traveled with me to various parliaments where we've gotten this law passed in 35 countries. And Vladimir Putin hates him for this. And in 2015, um, Vladimir was poisoned in Russia and he nearly died. He was in a coma, mul multiple organ failure. Um, I, I begged him not to go back to Russia after that, but he went back in 2017 and was poisoned again, um, disabled from both poisonings. And then when the war started um, in, in 2022, in March, um, we were having dinner in London, and um, he told me that he was going back to Moscow again, and he was going back specifically to protest the war. And I said, you can't. They've already tried to kill you twice. The best that will happen is you'll be arrested. And he was unmoved. He said, I have to go back because how can I lead the Russian people to standing up against this terrible, murderous war if, I don't, if I'm too afraid to go back to my own country? He went back to Moscow. Um, he started giving interviews um, on, on MSNBC and CNN. He called the war a war, which is supposedly illegal in Russia. He called Putin a murderer. And shortly thereafter, um, a bunch of dark black uh, 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 uniformed police officers um, uh, came to him as he was getting out of his car, grabbed him, put him in a minibus and put him in detention. He's been in detention for a year. Um, he, uh, he first was charged with some minor offenses and then the they started adding the offenses on. Uh, first, first calling the war a war. Second, they said he's a member of a undesirable organization. And third, and most profoundly, they've charged him with treason. Mm -hmm. And he's now facing 25 years in jail. The sentence will be read out on Monday. Um, he's suffered tremendously in prison. He's lost about 17 kilos. Uh, he can no longer feel his feet anymore from the nerve damage that was done from the poisonings. And he can't get any exercise to uh, sort of keep his nerves going. Um, and basically, he is now what I would describe as the most punished political prisoner in Russia. And most importantly, as you mentioned, he's a British citizen. He's, he's a, he has a British passport. He uh, lived in the UK for some period of time. He went to Cambridge University. And the British government has done absolutely nothing um, to protest his imprisonment. That was going to be my next question. So far, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, what has been their response? Of course, diplomatic ties with Russia have been severed. But do things change, Bill, when you have one of your citizens being withheld in a situation like this and, and looking at a possible 25-year sentence? It's, it's shocking beyond belief that, that this country has done nothing for this man. Um, they, they, you know, they, they say, well, we, you know, we, we, he's a, also a Russian citizen, so it's none of our business. But, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you something. I, I, I've gone, since he was the person responsible for this legislation, the Magnitsky Act, um, which sanctions human rights violators in Russia, I've gone to this government, I've gone to the Canadian government, the US government, the European Parliament, the European Union, and I've asked them to use the Magnitsky Act on the people persecuting him. And in November, the Canadian government did. They sanctioned nine individuals. Um, earlier in this spring, the US did. And he, as I said, he's a British citizen and the British government has done absolutely nothing. And it, and it makes me very, very um, upset that, that the British government would be so disrespectful of one of its own citizens in such a terrible mess. And, and I should point out that, that he's not just a regular British citizen. He's, he's one of the few people who very, very openly um, protesting this war in Russia. And to the extent that we want to have people trying to stop Putin from doing this war, we should do everything possible for people who are getting into trouble doing that.
Now, he's not the only journalist in trouble in Russia. Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Greshkovich has also been detained, the first US reporter to be arrested since the Cold War. And he's also facing a 20-year sentence. Was this telling us about the state uh, that Putin is in at the moment, Bill, if he's having to sort of pick these fights, knowing that they will get international attention, or is he past beyond caring? Well, uh, Putin has got all sorts of different reasons for doing this type of stuff. The the um, the first is that he's just scared to death of the truth in his own country. And so he doesn't want um, Vladimir um, telling the truth, um, because if he does, then other people may understand that this war is, is not a successful war. This is a terrible war. He doesn't want Evan Gershkovich telling the truth to the West. Evan, Evan wrote a very persuasive article showing how the Russian economy was failing. So Putin, first and foremost, doesn't want the truth out. And so the best way of dealing with that is to arrest journalists, arrest opposition politicians. Um, and then Putin also likes to have hostages. Certainly the Evan Gershkovich situation is just pure hostage taking, plain and simple. I think that Putin has a bunch of uh, uh, Russians, Russian spies, um, Russian or, uh, organized criminals, Russian financial criminals who are in jail in the West that he'd like to get out. And no better way to get them out than to take a high profile American like Evan Gershkovitz, put him put him in uh, uh, effectively in a kidnapping hostage situation and then start to trade. And um, that's certainly what uh, the situation with Evan Gershkovitz is about. With Vladimir, I think it's it's um, more pernicious in a certain way because um, the, the message to every Russian citizen, as I mentioned, Vladimir's book, British and Russian, but the message to every Russian citizen is that if you speak up, um, you could go to jail for 25 years. And so to the extent that anyone else was thinking about going out and protesting, calling Putin a murderer, calling the war a war, they're all going to sit in their kitchens and say nothing because they don't want the same thing to happen to them as happened to Vladimir. 